Hi. So all those avenues you were just talking about, I want to open myself up to those avenues. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I've gotten really, really happy in following a lot of your processes, and I've so often found myself almost at the point of not caring if I get any of my stuff. <laughs> well, we want to clarify something. You don't stop caring because once it's in the vortex, the larger part of you is caring really a lot. So it's not that you've stopped caring. It's that almost everybody associates what they want with the resistance of yearning. And so when you give up resistance, sometimes it feels like you've let go of your desire, but you haven't. You've let go of the resistance of the desire. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And so don't say that you've stopped caring because your desire is not only still there, it has evolved. It's that you've just associated caring with yearning. So does the desire change? Does it look different? Like, like a Yes, depending on where you are. We talked about that earlier. As your inner being is calling you from where you are to where you want to be, depending upon your level of resistance, your desire does look different. For example, let's say that you want prosperity, but you've been believing for a long time that you don't have the right occupation or you don't have the right education or you don't have the right placement in life, so you've got beliefs that don't allow you to move freely to this desire. So your inner being is calling you to the desire, but you can only translate it through the lens of your beliefs. So yes, it changes continually. The more resistance you let go of, the more open-ended it all feels, and the more you begin to believe in the bigness of everything that you desire. So right before I got up here, I said to myself, She's answered most of my questions and the other ones I'm beginning to think I shouldn't even ask because I think that the point is to just kind of be happy and beat that drum and then those questions will be asked, yes. answered. Yes. So. Um, and then we called on you. Yeah. <laughs> so. I had to beat your friend with a stick to get her to, <laughs> to not come instead. So I think I'm just going to, you know, when I see those things come up to me and kind of stick their you know, what it seems like their nose in my face, but I know it's the opposite. And I kind of direct myself away from that. What are you talking about? Well, like if I have some resistance in my life or some contrast and it's kind of pointed, it's, it feels like it's coming up and surfacing and I have yes. to look at it. Yes. And I kind of work my way out of it. You know, like I've been going up your emotional scale, working my way through. Embrace it. Stuff. Appreciate it. Say, you are a gift to me about something. There's something here for me. You're helping me work the bugs out of something. Because here you are, you feel like you're in the way, but here you are. So you must be important to me because things are always working out for me. So here you are, and from my relationship with you, whatever experience this is, I'm getting closer to clarifying what I want, closer to vibrating in harmony with what I want, closer to getting what I want, closer to being in the receptive mode so that I am moving along to that sweet spot of what I want, translating thoughts to things. So I don't have to... Re worry about like I remember you said once you have a dream it's always a dream and it can change in what it looks like but basically it's just a, ba a dream of happiness that you've kind of put a vision on well let's clarify this so you've been putting things in the vortex and now it's bubbled into some significant what you want to call dreams or what some want to call goals there's a lot there and it's, it's big now you ask the question is it changing yes because every day you're putting more into it more definition into it more intricacy more specifics into it so it is morphing but it's not changing so much that we even need to call it changing it's just being shored up it's just transmitting a stronger signal it's just getting itself to be more ready for you to be ready for it so the question isn't about what it's doing let's not talk about whether it's changing let's talk about your path of least resistance to it. Now, this was a new conversation that we just began having today in this strong way, and you're amplifying it. It's your readiness that is changing, not your dream. Your dream is changing, but it was big a long time ago. In other words, it's time for you to begin letting it be yours. It's you that's changing. So are you getting that? It's you that's changing. So if you could stop being unhappy about the situation that is causing you to make the change to get to it. Oh, there it is. Instead, you want to bless this resistance because that's what's helping you to make the change in you that's getting you all the way to these things that you really want, to all that you want to be. 
If you heard that, we are so happy. You are the one changing. You are becoming less resistant all the time. And you know how you're becoming less resistant? By moving through resistance. As you move through something that feels like a struggle, you make more definition about who you are and what you want. As things don't go quite the way you want them to, you more clearly define what you want. Now, here's the thing. Oh, 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 oh. Your definition is not changing that. That's already there. What's changing is the resistance in you. Did you hear it that time? What's changing is the resistance in you. So you really want to say, just bring it on. I'm eager to learn. I'm eager to know. I'm eager to grow. I'm eager to become. I'm eager. I'm eager for whatever it takes for me to line up with this. And then, of course, do all the things we've been talking about. Talk about that. Talk about that. Talk about how you think that might feel. Use all the good words and all the good visualization that you can about it. But most of all, and what you said to yourself sitting over there is exactly the message that we want to give. In fact, it's the most important message of any workshop that we ever conduct. Just chill out. <laughs> Step three is your primary work. Step one is ask. You can't stop doing that. Step two is source is already answered and the vortex has already been created and your vibrational reality already exists. Step three is the get happy part, the let go of the cork part, the feel as good as you can feel part in any moment that you can. Step four is get really good at step three. That's all step four is. Step four is just being really good at step three, mastering step three, which means care so much about how you feel that when a thought comes, and they will, that don't feel so good, that you deliberately divert your attention. And then step five is our favorite step, really. That's where you're no longer mad at yourself when you're back in step one. Because of what we just said, you understand the value of contrast. You understand how important the contrast is to the change in you that is necessary for the matching with what you've already created. We've never said that clearer. And yet, you're so quiet. <laughs> So I have been kind of looking at this contrast and trying to figure out what it's, you know, what it's there for, what I've learned, and I turn towards that, and I, and I go towards that, and I kind of feel like I've, it's kind of like a, a scale, like I start down here and I get better, and then it goes like that. It's all right, going you get better and better and better and better. Sometimes contrast comes because there was contrast before that you gave your attention to. So you let the earlier contrast sort of set your thoughts you sort of were responding more than you meant to, to thoughts, and then more contrast comes like it. But in any case, every time contrast comes, there's clarification of desire. And any time there's clarification of desire, there's a higher probability that you can hold your thoughts on what you want. There are many ways to approach life, but we're going to point out for you two basic approaches. And you fall into both categories. All of you fall more into the first category than the second, but these are the two primary categories of creation that most of you are experiencing. First one, I know what I don't want, so I know what I do want. I know what I don't want, so I know what I do want. I know what I don't want, I really don't want that. I know what I don't want, I really don't want that. Others don't want it either. A lot of us don't want that. I know what I don't want. I really know what I don't want. I don't want that, and I don't like this about it, or this about it, or this about it, or this. I want that, but I really know what I don't want. And so what happens is I know what I don't want, which causes you to launch another rocket. But you know what you don't want, which causes you to launch another rocket. But you know what you don't want, which causes you to launch another rocket. So you've got this great expanse, this big-time tug-of-war going on. And then finally, you know what you don't want and you're so sick and tired of that that you launch this huge rocket that gets your attention for a minute. But you can't get there easily because this is where your practice is. But that was so big that it calls you in a really strong way. But it's a really hard path because you've put so much resistance on the way. So it's really interesting, isn't it? The whole time that you're building this vortex that will call you, and in fact, oh, a lot of the stuff that you've built your vortex out of is resistance. The very resistance that was necessary for you to build what you wanted is the resistance that holds you back from it, if you're not a good focuser. 
that if you're a good focuser, every time you know what you don't want and you know what you do want, you give your attention to that. So this is the distinction. You launch a rocket, you know what you don't want, you launch a rocket, you keep doing that. So there's a big extreme. It's like pulling a rubber band back, 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 back. And when you let go of it, it goes really far. You say, oh boy, am I a good creator. That's one approach. That's what most of you do most of the time. Here's the other approach. Know what I don't want, know what I do want. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I like that about that. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Know what you don't want, know what you do want. Oh, how lovely is that? Mm -hmm. Didn't think about that and talk about that. Yeah, I can line up with that. Know what I don't want. Oh, yeah, how lovely is that? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Not the drama you like. <laughs> it's not the drama you like. It doesn't get the attention that you think you want. Nobody's going to write a book about you. You have to suffer really a lot before they'll write a book about you. You have to overcome terrible stuff. But you can play it any way you want. We recommend a combination of all of that, but more of this, more of staying in your lane, more of feeling the rumble strip. When you get into your car, you know where your lane is. You know that you don't want to try to occupy the same space as another car. And when your wheels are on the rumble strip, you just naturally correct your steering. You don't make a big deal about it. You don't call someone, the rumble strips are here. <laughs> I'm on the rumble strips. What do you think it means? <laughs> what do you think I should do? I don't know. I don't know how they got here. I'm sure I was watching what I was doing. I'm just sure I was watching what I was doing. No, nope, no, nope. just came out of the blue. No, nope, no, nope. rumble strips are right there. Mm -hmm. What should I do? What should I do? Oh, all four wheels are on the other side of the rumble strip. Yeah, that ever happened to you? Really? What happened? Oh. I'm in the ditch. I'm in the ditch. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? What? Watch the bridge. Watch. What? 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 Getting a new body is so time consuming. <laughs> Once you go over that cliff, it's trouble. <laughs> Where all you had to do is feel the rumble strip and do what you naturally do. You just correct your steering. You don't make a big thing about it. You accept it as guidance and you utilize it well. Helpful. Very.